In this video, I'm going to go over an introduction to Sigmund Freud's dream interpretation. So in this introduction, I'm basically going to lay out the groundwork for you to kind of understand the, the basis for dream interpretation according to Freud. And so we're going to be going over presuppositions and some core concepts. And then in future videos, we're going to dig deeper into dream interpretation from a Freudian perspective. So first of all, I'll say that Freud begins by distinguishing his dream interpretation from that of the history of dream interpretation. And so throughout history, obviously, um, many different cultures, especially who with a religious mindset, a pre-scientific mindset, believed in uh, the reality of and the importance of dream interpretation. And as they did this, they usually believed that dreams told them something about the future. Now, this is in distinction to Freud's view. Freud does not believe that dreams can tell you about your future. They're not a prophetic or spiritual phenomena. Freud believed that they were um, able to be studied scientifically and that they were purely natural phenomena that were a buildup of kind of underlying thought structures that then manifested in dream content, right? And so this is unconscious kind of uh, build up of material, of, of thought material in the mind uh, that would manifest through dreams. Now, Freud believed that you could uh, scientifically analyze dreams. He also believed that dreams all had a meaning. So he is in contrast to other scientific thinkers who believe that especially at his time and obviously in our time, that dreams are meaningless. So Freud did not believe that dreams are meaningless. He did not believe that they were just random firings of neurons. He believed that they could be, psych uh, they could be rationally deconstructed so that you could understand their meaning. And so basically throughout history, uh, well, Freud says that there's two kinds of types of dream interpretation throughout history with, through the pre-scientific um, you know, groups of people. And basically there's a group of pre-scientific dream interpreters that focus on symbolism. And so they use their intuition to understand um, symbols and the overall meaning of, 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 of the dream overall. But the problem with that, Freud said, is that the symbols aren't always clear and uh, you don't always get such a clear dream um, where you can understand the dream as a whole. So, you know, maybe there's many simple kind of dreams um, that have these motifs in them. And so um, Freud says that's one kind of dream interpretation and they believe that that kind of has a message for the future, these, these pre-scientific um, dream interpreters. Then there's the other ones who kind of use these uh, codes. They kind of, Freud refers to them as cipher interpretation. So they kind of have a code like a like you would from a dream book and each individual image in the dream is then deconstructed into a different meaning depending on what the the book uh, you choose says. And so that's another way of interpreting dreams Freud says. And Freud says that his method is similar is not similar to them at all in the fact that he does not believe that they can predict the future. But it's similar to that second method of deconstructing each element of the dream into parts. 
And Freud says that that's important because when he asked his clients whether they could uh, you know, understand the meaning of, of the dream as a whole, they never could. But if they could deconstruct little elements of it, that's then when Freud's method of free association comes into play. Um, because each individual dream uh, symbol can be, or, or dream construct, dream element or content throughout the dream can be broken up and upon breaking it up then there then Freud um, can get his client to undergo the process of free association so we'll get to that soon so basically the underlying concept that of Freud's dream interpretation is that the dream is nothing other than a disguised wish, okay? So that's really what Freud is looking to find and discover and interpret in his own dreams and in other people's dreams, is the underlying wishes that people have. Now, this um, comes about, Freud kind of postulates that these dreams come about through the conflict of different elements within the mind, different constructs within the mind. So there is part of the mind that has a desire or a wish, and then another part of the mind that wishes to, um, you know, constrain that, so that um, there is that um, sublimation or constriction of the the desire. So. That's why the dream is a disguised wish. It's not just, it, dreams don't just purely outline your wishes. I mean, they might do that, but Freud wasn't interested in that. Freud was interested in, dis, in looking at those elements of dream features that were unintelligible. The elements of dream features that were kind of bizarre or impossible or confusing. And so he said that underlying those confusing elements in the dream, was an unstable compromise between desire and prohibition. So there's the desire and prohibition, and then that, that conflict of thoughts within the mind, um, which is unconscious, produces then that dream image that you experience in your dream. And so underlying the, underlying the dream, underneath the dream, is this process, uh, this conflict between desire and prohibition okay so it's concealing your wish that you that you have all right because in freud's view of the mind uh, there is um, the idea of the pleasure principle okay and we'll get to that um, in a moment so basically um, like plato freud saw mental life as a struggle between the beast in man and some higher moderating influence. And so in Freud's psychology, there is the id, which would be Plato's beast, right? Which is this unruly, unconscious, uh, kind of more animalistic desires that we have. And then there's the ego, which is the more rational um, component which we develop across time, which mediates the desires or the wishes of the id. So the id is kind of infantile. It seeks pleasure. It operates by the pleasure principle. Okay, so it's seeking pleasure. It has these wishes, you know, these desires um, that, are, that are kind of uh, primitive, right? And the ego is... Uh, the rational component, which operates under the uh, reality principle. Now, the reality principle is basically that which allows the ego to set forth its goals in accordance with reality. So it still is seeking pleasure, but it's seeking a more realistic understanding of how to obtain that pleasure. So it mediates the... Um, between the itself and the id, right? And so the id is trying to just seek pleasure, but in a way that is illogical, irrational. It's, you could say, 
that this tension between the id and the ego is akin to the tension between um, rationality and the passions or or thinking and feeling. You could say that in Freud's kind of view of the mind. Now, it's important to understand Freud's view of the mind when we're talking about the dream analysis because um, Freud's understanding of dream interpretation is deeply woven into his understanding of, of the mind because um, they're, you know, two sides of the same you know, they're, they're intimately linked. So I'm going to read this quote here. Okay, this quote is by um, Stefan Wilson, who writes the introduction to Freud's interpretation of dreams. Okay, so just as he, Freud, had previously seen hysterical symptoms as a body language or somatic metaphor reflecting underlying conflict a product of suppressed emotion and inhibited desire, Freud now saw dreams as symptom equivalents, susceptible to the same mode of deconstruction. He proceeded to transpose the method of free association developed in the treatment of hysterical patients to the content analysis of his own dreams. Close quote. So we can see there that uh, Freud is developing this understanding of the mind and developing techniques of how to help people. And it all started with his work with patients with hysteria. Then now he's using that method of free association with the dream content because he can see, because he's now seeing and viewing dreams as symptoms. He's treating them as symptoms and that's why he's using the technique of free association, which is like a therapy, in order to uncover the underlying suppressed emotion that has been prohibited, um, that he feels is causing uh, this kind of um, symptom to um, symptoms that are manifesting, which is the dreams, these desires that haven't been able to be uncovered. Okay, so in... Freud's view, um, his understanding of the dream is that it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. In other words, it, the dream is a lie. It is trying to conceal, hide the, the truth of the matter. And that's why there requires this free association method. Now, let's get into what the free association method Asian method is, so you can understand it more. I'm going to read another quote by Steve, uh, Stephen Wilson, and uh, he outlines this beautifully in the introduction of the interpretation of dreams. So here it is, open quote. The nub of the method consisted of inducing in himself a twilight state analogous to hypnotic trance by deliberately relinquishing the conscious organization and editorship of ideas. If the mishmash of thoughts that surfaced in this open-minded state was not consciously organized, Freud reasoned, then any pattern it revealed must be a reflection of the unconscious mind. And this functioned according to the pleasure principle, knowing only wishes whose fulfillment admitted of no contradiction and was unbounded by logic or time." Close quote. So we can see there that there is this kind of um, inducing of a state that is akin to a hypnotic kind of state. And during this state, um, Freud basically says it's very easy to get into this state. He's just, he taught his uh, you know, clients how to do it and he himself finds that it's very easy for him to get into the state if he begins to just write down his free his associations that are flowing out of him. And this state is kind of an imaginative state. It's not a state that where you use critical thinking. You're actually trying to pull back the intellect. Uh, he actually quotes Schiller, uh, this great quote, but it's too long to really read out here, so I won't read it out. But basically in the quote, uh, it says that 
there is this pulling back of the intellect, right? And so the intellect kind of pulls back and allows this, the, the content from the unconscious to kind of come up. It, and it, really, it's an imaginative state. It's a cr- kind of a, akin to a creative flow state where just ideas are just flooding in and you're not really trying to judge those ideas that are coming in. That's a very important aspect to um, dream interpretation, according to Freud, is that you aren't to judge the, the contents that are coming up. The contents could be quite bizarre or different or strange uh, to things that you would consciously think of. But remember, uh, what you're doing is you are in this kind of state where you aren't editing your ideas. You're not using your critical thought. You're just allowing thoughts to come up and, and flow up. And through that, you are then associating from the, the dream content that you have, that aspect of, of the dream, you're associating from there to some idea or to the underlying thoughts that that dream content triggers within you. So, so your mind is kind of being led to um, from, from the dream content to associate to these underlying thoughts that are surrounding that dream content. And you basically can write down all the different um, associations that come with, that come from analyzing the dream content. And as you do that, um, you begin to see kind of this tapestry of associations uh, and, and you begin to bring to consciousness the, this understanding of the unconscious associations, which then Jung basically, uh, sorry, not Jung, Freud, because I'm used to making so many Jung videos. Check out my other Jung videos. I might as well plug them right here. Um, one of my most popular videos is Dream Interpretation According to Jung. So let's continue with Freud. Um, basically, Freud says that there are... Um, there's a concealed narrative or latent content, which is this narrative of thoughts that underlie in the unconscious underneath the dream content. And so the dream content is is your actual dream that you've had, that you've experienced during your sleeping time, right? And you've written down your dream. That's the dream content. Underlying that dream content is the the latent or concealed narrative underneath it and and there might be multiple um, points of um, underlying uh, thoughts that contributed to that specific manifestation of in the dream for example there might be a character in the dream that has you know uh, kind of they're like one person that you know in real life, but they're also kind of like someone else, you know? And so this, this shows a conflict underlying that dream image of different thoughts that are competing with each other, you see? And so that's an example of the buildup of, of the constructs within the mind to produce the dream content. So that, that's basically what it is. It's like you're going fishing. You've got the dream content and we're digging deep into that to understand what's underneath it. And so we're trying to really dig out the latent content that lies lays underneath the dream content. And that coincides with the wish. We're trying to understand what is the wish that um, you have, the pleasure that you're seeking, what is it? And, and that's what we're trying to dig down and, and find within the dream. So following on from those ideas and examples, um, I'm going to read this quote, open quote. But Freud found that not only did each element of a manifest dream tend to lead to some latent common denominator, but a single latent thought was also prone to be presented by several manifest elements. An interrelationship he referred to as over determination, close quote. So that's what I was talking about, basically, is that there's the content of the dream up the top, then there's the latent content underneath that, 
and he found that they link together to a, to a kind of a, a common meaning. And there might be many elements within the dream that point down to this common meaning, okay, that underlies the dream itself. And, um, but then later on, um, what happened was, is that when Freud came across a lot of kind of understanding of sexual symbolism, now, some people mistakenly think that Freud invented these sexual symbolism, but he did not. It even gives an example of in the Bible, in the Song of Songs, King Solomon supposedly written the Song of Songs, which describes a lot of sexual symbolism, right? Of, you know, um, your, like a, the glacier between my rock and all this stuff, right? So it's all this kind of symbolism of, sexuality and so Freud coming across this understanding of um, sexual symbolism actually encountered a problem with his main thesis in 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 his book because in his book um, the interpretation of dreams his main thesis has to do with this idea of free association as we talked about earlier however the, the idea of symbolism right um, comes into play and so this forced Freud to modify his method to include the direct interpretation of sexual symbolism uh, based on an analyst's uh, like under, com understanding of the common usage of these symbols such as you know like a cigar could symbolize um, you know a penis or a, a, an umbrella or you know many such different things—a clam for a, for a woman's um, genitals, etc. Okay, so there's many um, different kinds of symbols then that Freud had to then kind of adjust his idea of um, dream interpretation to account for um, symbols, symbolism, and so you know some of Freud's. Uh, Methods and ideas are contradictory, so there are kind of these. So he wasn't really like philosophically tight with his ideas, and that's one of the criticisms people have of his work. Um, a lot of his work was very generalized, you know, spoken in generalities, and was also, um, you know, he was he contradicted himself in in certain ways at certain points. But I think that it's still important to realize that if you apply his methods to a subset of, of dreams, that uh, it can still be very effective. And I also want to note here, and I will create more videos in the future on this topic more in depth. However, when I analyzed Freud's understanding of free association and dream analysis, particularly using that method of free association, and if, if you have to really read in detail of his examples of the dreams that he gives, because they're quite sophisticated and they are really illuminating. So I would highly suggest if you haven't got a copy of um, the interpretation of dreams by Freud, then you get it. I'll put a, an affiliate link in the, in the description. If you would like to support this channel, you can buy the book through there. Um, anyhow, the... What interested me about his method is I could see um, this kind of elements of it that coincide with the current understanding in cognitive psychology, specifically around this subsector of cognitive scientists who um, are called connectionists, right? So the connectionists or associationists, they believe that the mind, the structure of the mind, is a network of nodes and links between nodes and um, that network is those links are either strengthened um, or weakened according to the associations that are built up in the mind and what's interesting about Freud's understanding of um, dream interpretation and using free association is when you look at his associations it very much seems like he is uncovering the unconscious kind of network 
of the associations within the mind. And if you kind of study cognitive psychology, you might understand more about what I'm talking about. But um, I just thought that was an interesting gem there that I would share with you because uh, it's very interesting. And apparently there are a lot of you know, developments in neuroscience and other uh, more cutting edge areas that are kind of proving Freud uh, correct in many ways. Of course, the unconscious being a big uh, idea that Freud popularized. And so that's very interesting. Um, the next thing I would say here is that, um, yes, so basically the dream is an agent of misinformation for Freud. And our job as the interpreter is try to unravel the neuroses that underlie um, these dreams, these concealed messages that we have. Um, and basically, yeah, in Freud's understanding, uh, the dream is telling us a lie and we have to uncover it. Because again, remember, the, the idea of Freud's conception of the mind coincides with Freud's understanding of dream interpretation. And so th the ego does not want to admit to having these wishes, right? And it does not, and it, or it does not think that they are realistic and it wants to suppress them. And so our desires are prohibited, you know, and there's that conflict underlying um, our dreams. Um, so this is just an introduction and um, I'm going to release a lot more videos on Freud as well as Jung. So please check out the rest of my channel. I hope you've enjoyed this for now. And I'll see you in the next video.